Now, does this solve this problem? This is what we wanted to do, right? We wanted to pass in a behavior and then execute that behavior. Well, it kind of does. But I think there is some extra work that we are doing over here. We are not just passing in a behavior. We are passing a thing that has a behavior. You're not passing in a perform method. We are passing a greeting, which has a method, which is the perform. Wouldn't it be cool if we had just an action being passed in rather than a class that implements an action? Now here, wouldn't it be cool if we just pass that action in and then this executes the action? Well, lambdas set out to achieve just this. Lambdas lets you create these entities which are just functions. They are called lambda expressions, which are just functions which do not belong to a class. They're not methods of a class. They are just functions which exist in isolation. And here's the best part. Those functions can be treated as values. This is kind of confusing for somebody who's totally used to object-oriented programming and they haven't done functional programming. So let me explain what I mean by that. What I mean by functions as values. You know what inline values are, right? So you have, uh, let's say you have a string or a double or an integer. You can define them inline. So here is an example of a string called name being declared and assigned a value of foo. Foo is a string which I have written inline. And when this executes, it takes this inline value and assigns it to the variable name. So name contains a value, which is the string foo. This should be obvious. Similarly, 3.14 is a double value, which is assigned to pi. So we know that data acts as values in Java. You can assign it to variables. You can assign it to different types. Similarly, objects act as values in Java. You can assign an instance of an object to a variable. Now the question is, can we assign a block of code to a variable as a value? So the value is not the execution of the block of code. It is the block of code itself. The piece of code becomes a value that gets assigned to a variable. And that wherever the variable goes, a piece of code goes with it. Is that possible? Can we do something like this? Have a block of code, which is the value, which is the steps that need to be executed. Right here, you can have lines of Java code. Is that possible? Now let's take a look at this for a minute. What is the standard way in which we write a block of code in Java? Uh, before Java 8, of course. Well, it's the method, right? You create a method which contains a block of code. It has input arguments and it has a return, right? This is how you typically do it. Imagine if you could take a method and assign it to a variable. And again, note that I'm not saying execute the method and assign the return to a variable. I'm saying assign the method itself. The method becomes a thing that gets assigned to a variable. Can you do that? Now, let's say I have this perform method. This is the one we just saw, right? We have a perform method, which is a public, returns a void, and it has system.out.print. Now, what if I were to assign this to a variable called the block of code? This is possible in Java 8 using Lambda. You can write a Lambda expression which does just this. And once you do this, you can take that variable, a block of code, and pass it around and have different other pieces of code executed, which is really exciting. So let's see how to write this Lambda expression. The code that you're looking at has a lot of extra things which you don't need. For instance, let's take a look at this public. Public makes sense when a function is a part of a class in a method, right? You need to know if a method is a public or a private or a protected because it makes sense in the context of a class. But if a function exists in isolation, it doesn't make sense to call it public. The function is accessible by whoever has that variable. Let's get rid of that. Next, let's look at the name. When you assign a string to a variable, what's the name that you refer that string by? It's the name of the variable. You don't have to give it another name. Similarly, when you assign this function to a variable called a block of code, the way you refer to this function is using that variable name. You're gonna use a block of code name to access the function, which means that it doesn't need this other name. So let's get rid of that too. Now the creators of the Java spec could have rested here and say, okay, this is how you create a Lambda expression, but they actually went a step further. Now you see, when you look at this code, if I were to show you this code and say, can you tell me what the return type is? You don't need to look at this void. You can actually look at the code and figure out what the return type is, right? It doesn't return anything, so it's a void. So the Java compiler is now smart enough to do just that. The Java compiler says, hey, if you're writing a Lambda expression, 
don't tell me what the return type is. I can look at the code and figure it out. If you have a return five over here, the compiler knows, yes, this is something that returns an integer. If you have a return hello world here, it knows this is something that returns a string. If it's an object, it knows what type it is. So the compiler will know what the return type is based on the expression itself. So turns out in Java 8, you don't have to provide the return type over here for a Lambda expression. So even that goes away. So this is what's left. These are the elements that you need to provide in order to write a Lambda expression. So we took a function that we know. We know how to write that method, right? We started out with the perform method. So we removed all the things that we don't need to specify when that becomes a Lambda expression. We don't have to specify public for a Lambda. You don't have to specify the return type. You don't have to specify the name. So with that, what's left is this parentheses, which indicate the arguments, and then the block of code, okay? So the syntax is pretty much this for a Lambda expression, except for one small addition. The addition is you need to put this symbol over here. You need to put that between the parentheses and the block of code. If you put this, well, there you go, you've got your Lambda expression. So if you know how to write a method in Java, you now know how to write a Lambda expression in Java. You need to convert these steps in your mind till you get comfortable and after that you'll be writing these expressions directly. In order to write a Lambda expression, take a method, remove the modifiers, right? You don't need the public private, you don't need the name of the method, and you don't need the return type. Now what's left is a Lambda expression except for adding the symbol, which kind of looks like an arrow, okay? You put this between the parentheses and the curly braces, you've got your Lambda expression. Now this Lambda expression can be assigned to a variable. You can actually do this in Java 8, and this variable contains the value, which is that function, all right? There is one further shortcut that you can do if your body of the Lambda expression is just one line. Here, it's just one line, that's system.out.print. So if that's just one line, you can actually remove the curly braces. So it just becomes this. You have the parentheses, the arrow, and then that line of code. But remember, this is only if you have just one line of code in your Lambda expression. If you have multiple lines, then you are gonna need the curly braces, okay? This is how you write Lambda expressions.